Explore more about the topics you love with Topper. Subscribe now and keep learning. Hi, in this class on set theory, we are going to see two important and interesting concepts known as that of a subset and a superset. Now, realize that both subset and superset are defined for a given set. So we will write, in this class we will talk about subset for a given set or subset of a given set and superset of a given set. So these are the two concepts that we are going to learn in this session. Now, before looking at the definition of subset, let us first look at the mathematical way of representing a subset. Now, we can say that a given set A is a subset of a given set B if and only if an element A being an element of the set A implies that the same element A is also an element of the set B. So, now we have made a very simple statement which says that if we have two sets A and B such that set A is a subset, so this notation here represents a subset. So, this notation that I have written here represents a subset. And it means that A is a subset of B if and only if an element small a is an element of a set A will imply that A is an element of B. So what this means is only if A and B are related in such a way that every element of A is also an element of B then we say that A is a subset of B. So this definition was very simple. And now let us look at some examples of subsets or rather before looking at examples we will look at the Venn diagram concept related to subsets. Now let us say that the set A is denoted by this Venn diagram. So we will have elements of the set A such as A, small b, small c, small d and so on. So let us say that the set A in this case has just four elements A, B, C and D. Let us now take a set B which contains elements say a b c d f and k so now we have defined two sets the set a consists of elements a b c d and set b consists of elements a b c d f and k now if we can say that every element of set a is also present in set b then we would be able to write that a is a subset of b so we will start checking each and every element of set a Realize that this element of set A, that is small letter A, is also present in the set B. Similarly, this element of set A, that is small letter B, is also present in set B. This is the case for all the elements of set A. So if you look at this element C, it is also present in set B. And finally, if you look at this element D of A, then it is also present in the set B. But in addition to this, the set B also contains a more element, but that doesn't really matter. What we want to see is whether every element of set A is contained in set B or not. And clearly in this case, every element of set A is contained in set B. A, B, C and D are all the elements contained in set B as well. And so we can say that A, set A is a subset of set B. So we say that a given set is a subset of the other set because every element of that set is present in the other set. Now, realize that like the concept of subset, we also have a concept of superset in which we write exactly the opposite. So if you talk about superset, let me write it here. If we want to talk about superset, then the definition is exactly reverse. We say that A is a superset of B if and only if small letter A being an element of set B implies that small letter A is also an element of set A. So now we have seen another definition that of a superset. So we say that A is a superset. So the subset site when reversed horizontally becomes a superset and it means that when A is a superset of B then an element of B if an element A is an element of set B then it has to be an element of set A. Now this concept is exactly same as this concept. So subset and superset are related terms. Whenever two sets are such that one is a subset of the other, then the other is a superset of the first. And so we've now seen what we mean by subset of a set and superset of a set. 
Now, one interesting concept remains and that is of a proper subset. But before looking at what a proper subset is, let us see a small numerical example based on the subset theory and superset theory. Now, let us say that we have two sets. So, let me say that I have two sets. The first set is S1 and it contains of and I can define S1 as containing all elements x such that x square minus x minus 2 is equal to 0. So now I am writing a set S1 such that it contains of all elements x such that x square minus x minus 2 is equal to 0 and definitely x is an element of real numbers. Now, in a similar way, suppose we are given another set S2, which consists of elements y such that y is equal to under root of 2 plus under root of 2 plus under root of 2 and so on, where you will notice that all these under roots extend to infinity. So we have infinite terms now. Clearly, you cannot see a clear relation between sets S1 and S2. And so we have to check the following condition. Now I have to check which, what is the relation between S1 and S2. So suppose the options given to us are S1 is a subset of S2 or if we have another option which says that S2 is subset of S1 or if we have another option given that S1 and S2 are exactly equal then we have to check which of these three options is correct. And so we will start examining the two sets in question. The set S1 consists of all x's such that x square minus x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now if I was to start with analysis for set S1, so I will write down the analysis for S1 here and I will similarly write down the analysis for S2 over here. So let me write down that S1 is consisting of all elements x such that x square minus x minus 2 is equal to 0. Realize that if x square minus x minus 2 is equal to 0, then this will imply that x minus 2 into x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now in turn, these two products when equal to 0 would mean that either x is equal to 2 or x is equal to minus 1. So now we got the value of x minus 2 into x plus 1 equal to 0. When this product is equal to 0, it will mean that either one of them is equal to 0 or both of them is 0, which mean mean that we will get two solutions, either x is equal to plus 2 or x is equal to minus 1. So if now suppose we were to write the elements of set S1, we would say that minus 2 or rather minus 1 is definitely an element of this set because x satisfies this value of x satisfies this equation. Similarly, x is equal to plus 2 also belongs to this set. And so you get that set S1 consists of elements minus 1 and 2. So this in fact is set S1. Now we will come to set S2 which is a little more interesting. We have written in set S2 that S2 consists of elements y such that y is equal to under root of 2 plus under root of and so on and this goes on to infinity. So there are infinite number of root 2's such that there is an outermost root 2 that extends towards end then there is a 2 plus root 2 that extends towards the end and so on. So all these roots extend towards the end to infinity and we have to check one of these four options. Now the options say that S1 is a subset of S2, option B says that F2 is a subset of S1 and option C says S1 and S2 are equal. Now realize that we have solved for S1 and we obtained that S1 consists of two elements minus 1 and 2. Now what do we do for S2? We have this very complicated looking expression here. So what we can do is we can let y be equal to this entire expression. So I'm now writing that I'm solving for S2 and I know that y is equal to under root of this term that goes on to infinity and the term is under root of 2 plus under root of 2 plus under root of 2 plus under root of and so on and this goes on to infinity. So now we've written that y is equal to under root of 2 plus under root of 2 plus under root of 2 and so on which goes on till infinity. Now how do we deal with this kind of an expression which goes on till infinity? Well, clearly the options given here are either S1 and S2 are subsets of each other or S1 is equal to S2 and such options. Well, 
to check one of these four or op three options, what we will have to do is we will have to find the various values of y that satisfies this condition. That is, we will have to find the various values of y such that y is equal to this term. Now, clearly, this term is a single number and so this will only give one and only one value. And so we could have directly said that S2 consists of only one element, whereas S1 consists of two elements. But that would not be enough to conclude that S2 is a subset of S1. It would mean that the number of elements in S1 is 1, whereas the number of elements in set S2, S1 is 1. So S2 has one element, whereas S1 has two elements. But that is not enough for us to infer that S2 is a subset of S1. What we would want is, we would want to check if these precise elements are present in S2 or not. So what we do is, we squared both sides of this equality. And so we can now write y square. So when we square both sides and realize that the outer square sign disappears or rather the outer square root sign disappears because I'm squaring both sides. When I square both sides, this outermost square root sign disappears and so I get this two here. Then I get this plus here and then I get this expression which consists of two plus under root of two plus under root and so on. Now realize that this also goes on till infinity and because if you, because this term goes on till infinity, this second term that we have written here also goes on till infinity. But realize that this second term itself we had designated as y. And so we can replace this entire term by y. And so what we get now is y square is equal to 2 plus y. So this entire second term that I have put in brackets is now substituted as y. Is they replaced by y. And now the expression that I get is y square minus y minus 2 is equal to 0. Realize that here we had x square minus x minus 2 is equal to 0 and here we are getting y square minus y minus 2 equal to 0. What this would mean is we will get the same values for y as we are getting for x. And so we can now write down this will imply that y is either equal to minus 1 or y is equal to plus 2. Will that mean that S1 and S2 are exactly the same? Well, it won't mean the same because here y represented this value and realize that this is a positive value and so y can never be minus 1. This minus 1 has resulted only because we took a square on both sides. But if you check this minus 1 will not satisfy this equality because this is a positive side on the positive term on the right hand side whereas here we are getting a minus 1. So y is equal to minus 1 cannot be a solution although x is equal to minus 1 is a solution. So here y is equal to minus 1 will not be a solution. So the only solution we will get that y is equal to 2 which will now imply that this set S2 will only consist of a single element 2 which easily allows us to conclude that S2 is a subset of S1 because in S2 we have this element 2 whereas in S1 we have 2 as well but also minus 1 and so we will say that from this analysis we will say that S2 is a subset of S1. Well, so the answer that we select is option B which says that S2 is subset of S1 and so option B is the correct option, option A is incorrect and option C is also incorrect. So in this manner, we also saw a new problem, interesting problem related to subsets and supersets. Now, only one small thing remains to be said about this concept and the concept that is the related concept is that of a proper subset. So let us see what a proper subset is. Well, we can say that a is a proper subset of set B. So we will say that set A is a proper subset of set B. And for proper subset, we use the same notation as for subset except for this horizontal dash at the bottom. So we will in exclude this horizontal dash. So whenever this horizontal dash is present beneath this sign, it will mean a subset. Whereas when a horizontal dash is absent between beneath this sign, then it will mean a proper subset. And so this sign here means that we are talking about proper subset. Now we saw what is a proper or rather we've seen how to represent a proper subset by this symbol but we will now see what exactly is a proper subset. So we'll say that A is a subset of proper subset of B if and only if A firstly has to be a subset of B and in addition to that A should not be equal to B. What this means is here A and B if we compare these A and this B it will mean that a is definitely a subset of B, but the second condition that A is equal to B is not satisfied. So because A is not equal to B, we will say that A is a proper subset of B. So A is also a subset of B and in addition to that, A is 
also a proper subset of B because there is at least one element in set B which does not belong to A. In fact, there are two elements in set B that do not belong to A and so we can say that A is a proper subset of B. Explore more about the topics you love with Topper. Subscribe now and keep learning.